everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Today I'll be going over catastrophe averted. What to do when your engraver stops midway through an engraving with laser gerbil. I was about two hours into a five hour engraving and it was going along wonderfully until my husband walked in the room. Now he's not allowed near any of my computer equipment because he has crashed whole networks just by looking at a computer. I swear. This is about the only computer in this house that I will let him touch. I tease him that it has something to do with the probe that the aliens gave him during his abduction. Or it's really his magnetic personality. So here I was with not even half of an engraving done on cedar boards that I had glued together and spent a lot of time sanding. I was about to lose it. Now, firstly, I thought it was a good idea to do this, to try and keep my hoses out of the way. And really, I just videotaped this just moments before it crashed. I was having issues with the air hose snagging and getting caught up in the rolling wheels there on my laser gantry. So I thought, well, this would hold the air hose out of the way. But no, then my power cord decided to get snagged on my Z height adjuster and unplugged my laser. Now the laser actually kept going, but with no power to the laser, it didn't burn anything. So of course I couldn't use the pause and then resume. I had to figure out how to do the whole top half of the engraving somehow and rescue my whole sign. And I figured it out and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to share with this with you guys. Now I'm opening up the file again, not really going to go over any of the settings, just going to click next. So this is the important part here that you'll see. I always auto size it and I'm double checking what my width is. And right now I've got the offset of zero, zero and create. Cause I want to show you guys, if you always start at the home position, the zero, zero, you can rescue your work. I'm going to do this for everything now. So the first thing I'm going to do is because I open it up at zero, zero, I have no offset. I'm connected to my laser. I'm going to click home and then I'm going to click the frame button because my, this is my initial one where I just have the laser just going around the edges so I can make sure that the sign itself is at the zero, zero axis as well. Now, of course, this is easy if you have a spoil board and you've engraved your measurements on it. Right now, I have this board raised on blocks because I didn't want to put my table in there yet because I'm hoping to get to my rotary attachment soon and get it all figured out finally. And as you saw right there, it's about the halfway point that I always seem to have issues with my air hose. So I thought the little clamp would work. No, not a good idea. Although it kept it back, but then the power cord decided to snag on the top knob there of my Z height adjustment. Okay, so I framed that and I've made sure that, that my sign is perfect in the zero, zero position. Next, I'm going to reopen the very same file, but this time I'm going to use the offset. I'm going to let the machine itself know where it needs to know the start position. So that's why I put in the X position, I put seven millimeters and in the Y position, which actually goes up, I put six millimeters and then I click next. And now laser gerbil knows as soon as it opens up the file that it's going to start at seven millimeters in and six millimeters up. So of course I'm going to click on my home button again, make sure that sucker's at zero, zero. I do not have to set origin because my computer already knows that that's where I'm going to start and I will click frame again.
thank the laser gods that I went with the offset because this was about the point here that the laser decided it should become unplugged. So after my initial meltdown and not heading to the liquor cabinet, I decided I would take a ruler and from the bottom edge of the sign, I would measure where exactly my sign stopped engraving. So taking that measurement, I went right back to my design program and you'll see here in wireframe, I drew a box. I'm gonna take that to millimeters, select that box. And as you can see, I knew that it stopped about 229 millimeters up the board. Now I can crop in my program, but just in case you don't have this program, I'm gonna show you it in GIMP because Laser Gerbil is kind of fussy when it try, when you try to uh, crop. It, uh, it's hard to crop exact where you need it. So I'm just opening up the file here. I export the file as a PNG and there we go. Now I'm gonna to go to my magnifying tool and I'm going to zoom in and then I'm going to use my selection tool and I'm going to click and drag my mouse across and drag it up until I can get it exactly where I need it to be. And there we have our selection box and I click on crop to selection. So I zoom out, zoom out a little more and there you go. So I have it cropped absolutely perfect for what I need to finish for engraving. So I'm going to go export, give that a name, and I'm going to interlace the background. And I have the save background color turned off because it was transparent. And you'll see that I used the pixel format because I didn't want it to set, change any of my colors whatsoever. And I'll export that to be able to open up into Laser Gerbil. So I'm going to go file open and click on the top art. And I'm going to click next. Now the width I needed at 382 millimeters. So I'm just clicking off that auto size and making sure it's at 382 millimeters. So I'm still at seven in for offset. And now I'm going to type in the 229 millimeters up. And we'll just let Laser Gerbil process that. There we go. So seven millimeters over and it's 229 millimeters up. I will click on the home button and then I will click on the frame button. And just fast forwarding ahead because this is the most important part. I was able to line up exactly where my engraving had stopped. Now, if you don't, if you get a little off, then reopen the file and just change that millimeter setting until you get it perfect. So here I am restarting it again. And it's actually a perfect spot. So I am babysitting this laser closely. No clamps, people don't use clamps. Now I had thought about doing an elastic, but I have to get a really loose elastic so it's not putting any excess pressure on my stepper motor. So I'm sure I'm just gonna overthink the solution like I usually do and I'll figure something out. So yay, the sign is all finished. And I thought I better share this with you guys if this ever happens to you. And then this way we can all sleep a little more soundly. And that's it for today. So I hope this video helps and inspires. And if it does, please smash that subscribe button. Thank you so much.